Aloha. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be talking about the vast ocean of Salesforce APIs and how they can help you do more with less code. Before we dive in, here's our forward-looking statement slide. Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. My name is Chris, and I'm coming to you from the Outer Sunset neighborhood of San Francisco, not far from popular surf spot, Ocean Beach. I'm a product manager on the One Platform team, and I'll be your guide while we surf these API waters together. Salesforce data and domain capabilities are expressed through many API families. My product team is responsible for the SOAP, REST, and bulk core data APIs on the Customer 360 platform. We recently produced a planning framework you can use to help navigate this extensive platform ecosystem and ensure you choose the right API for the right job. I'm a big movie buff, and in addition to my proximity to Ocean Beach, I was inspired by a scene in Forgetting Sarah Marshall while preparing for this session. It's the scene where Paul Rudd's character teaches Jason Siegel's character how to surf. The core philosophy of that lesson was, the less you do, the more you do. Well, the Customer 360 platform offers some incredible API features that empower you to bring the very philosophy to bear in your integrations. There are two guiding principles that drive our team's investments in API features. Getting more work done in a single API call and reducing friction with the platform. Working more efficiently and with fewer impediments has never been more critical in this era where speed to market is paramount. I'd like to share what my team is working on with these two themes in mind. We offer a number of APIs that allow you to submit a request that takes the complexity of managing related transactions and offloads it to the platform. These APIs allow you to write less code that handles business logic and orchestration and helps preserve your budget of API request limits. The Composite API has been around for a few releases now, and making use of this REST resource supports up to 25 sub-requests in one shot with the option of rolling everything in the transaction back if an error is encountered during the processing. Including S-object collections as sub-requests within a composite call enables CRUD operations on over 1,000 records at once. That's a tongue twister, but it's super powerful. The composite API is like a shortboard, a fast, nimble, more advanced surfboard super useful to catch a challenging wave and perform fancy tricks, but those tricks are necessary in order to impress. The Summer 20 release offers a new collation feature that will be enabled by default to improve the performance of processing composite requests on S objects, making this shortboard of an API go even faster. The Graph API is the latest addition to the composite REST family and is designed for optimal processing of CRUD operations on related S objects. By leveraging the power of collation, this API extends the reach of standard composite requests by allowing you to assemble a more complicated and complete graph of related records. This API is ideal for big wave surfing when you need a special board to properly handle big swells. The Composite Graph API is currently in closed pilot, and we're targeting a GA in winter 21. So let's demonstrate how you can get more work done with an API call that requires less business logic to complete the workflow. Now, I'm out here at Ocean Beach, and let's say I'm interested in starting up a new surf-based business. So you can see the custom objects here that I've set up in my org to drive such an enterprise. If I switch here into the schema builder, you can see how these custom objects relate to some existing standard objects that will drive the business. Core to any surf enterprise will be the surfboards themselves. And I've designed that product to be comprised of three related entities, the surfboard style, the color options, and the size variations within those colors. Now I need to get this data into my org as quickly as possible. So the composite API sounds like a great choice given the relationships of these entities. You can see this 
requests already queued up here in VS Code that reflects an example surfboard object that I need to get into my org. I've got collate sub requests set to true because I want to make sure that the processing is optimized for this transaction. The surf style is details are right here. And you can see that I'm grabbing the resulting record ID and passing it along to the child color. And subsequent to that child color, I am uh, relating the size variations who are children of the color. Now, the cool thing about composite is I can make related requests uh, that are of interest for the given scenario to make use of in the result. So here I'm demonstrating the ability to describe each of those uh, objects that are being uh, created, as well as a SQL query that tells me how many leads I've got in my org currently who are surfers that I can start to build my business from. Let me grab this request and go over here into Postman, my handy dandy, trusty dusty HTTP client that I use every day as an API product manager. If you've never worked with Postman before, I encourage you to check it out. I find it super useful to very quickly engage with the API and explore my data. Um, Salesforce happens to have published a community-driven collection of Salesforce APIs that you can download and bring into your Postman client so you can get up and running with the Salesforce API even faster. So let me paste in that, that request, fire it off to the server, and check out my results. You can see here in the response that I see the IDs of all the resulting records. And if I scroll down farther, I start to see the results of that describe request or requests. And at the very bottom, I can see that I've got two leads in my org to start to build my new business from. Well, it's a start. Now, I've got many more surfboards that will drive my business that I need to get into my org. And this API is great, and it's a step up from what I'd be able to do normally, but I need more. Uh, and I'm going to use the composite graph to do more with less. The composite graph API is a new addition to the composite REST resource family, and it is optimized to perform CRUD operations on S objects only. I won't be able to do any queries. I won't be able to do any describes. I'm going to be able to use this API to design a graph of related objects and get them into the org in a single payload. This uh, payload here is comprised of two different graphs of more complete description of surfboards. So my first surfboard only came in one color and set of 12 sizes. In this graph, in this payload, I've got one style here with two different color options and all the related sizes. And I've even got another surfboard here that, had, that also comes in multiple colors and multiple sizes. So this is a much more uh, comprehensive request that I'm able to copy and bring over to this new graph endpoint. So I'll paste that into Postman, send it off to the server, and I get a very similar response back, just that the data is organized into a graph node instead of a flatter composite. I can go here into the Lightning UI and see the result of all of these record creations. I can see the relationships reflected, and I didn't have to write any business logic in my code to orchestrate the creation of all those relationships. Working within platform limits inherent to Salesforce's multi-tenant architecture is an ongoing responsibility when consuming APIs. Getting relief often involves calling support in anticipation of peak workloads 
or after an integration has already become blocked. We're making strides to help you succeed and avoid falling off your surfboard without a leash due to hitting the wave that is limits. First, we now allow paid active orgs to exceed their daily API request limit by a certain amount during spikes in volume to help reduce the likelihood of integrations being blocked. And we make it easy to track request volumes over a 30-day period in a new usage entitlement to help manage API consumption within an org. Bulk API 2.0 helps you perform large-scale operations, and I'm talking like the waves of Mavericks scale, with simpler end-to-end workflow that includes fewer total requests and more favorable limits. In Summer 20, we continue to close feature gaps between Bulk 2.0 and the original Bulk API by adding support for assignment rules and fixing a host of bugs so that more clients can take advantage of the simpler Bulk workflow. In addition, we're launching a closed bulk API 2.0 pilot that automatically optimizes the handling of locking errors. This feature involves no changes to the bulk workflow and should increase the success rate of ingest jobs. Also in summer 20, we've raised the daily bulk limit to 15,000 batches. This limit increase change applies to both bulk APIs. Let's switch gears and talk about Sockle. In summer 20, we extended the reach of Sockle by increasing the maximum character limit from 20,000 to 100,000. And we added support for up to 55 parent-child relationships in a query statement. It sounds like a lot, but 100,000 characters can be eaten up quickly with more involved queries that include lots of fields and filters. And building up such complicated queries can involve multiple API calls, and business logic in code. Furthermore, there are situations where long query strings cannot be successfully submitted to the server without running into other annoying limits. We're introducing a new function in Sockle called Fields that provides authors of a query statement with the ability to designate a predefined grouping of columns to automatically be returned in the result set of records. The fields function will make Sockle more approachable and data more discoverable. Fields will be in a closed pilot in summer 20, and we're currently recruiting for participants. All right, so I'm making some progress getting that surfboard data into the org, but now a team member wants to check in on the progress, and they're less familiar with this data model and this aspect of the project. I think a great way to get them up to speed quickly is to show them the design of the objects in the context of the records that represent those objects. Now, a great way to do that is through Sockle. And I'd like to do this again very quickly uh, without having to type out a very long and extensive statement and without having to remember the specifics of each field name. So the new Sockle fields function will allow me to do that extremely efficiently. So I'm going to submit this Sockle query in the Salesforce CLI using the new fields command with the all parameter pass. And I'm going to show them what the surfboard object and records look like. I'm going to send that to an output file so that I can bring it up in Visual Studio Code. And here you can see all of the fields and their associated values, very nicely formatted and in one view. Now, if I want to do that same type of exercise for the other custom objects, let's grab the colors. I can similarly do that same command, just going against the different object. And here we are. Here are all the colorways, the surfboards that they're related to, and if they have any artwork. Pretty handy. Um, it's also very useful to help understand what customizations to standard objects have been made. By passing the custom option to the fields function, I can show them what I've done to the leads standard object very quickly. 
again, without having to type out each one of these fields. So you can see the ID of the lead, the new are they a surfer field, and what their favorite type of board happens to be. Since the coronavirus pandemic began, we've observed tremendous activity taking place on the platform, really pushing the boundaries with more integrations, higher API volumes, supporting urgent digital transformations. I've worked on a number of urgent support cases over the last few months that should become less frequent through the adoption of these new API features. Taking advantage of APIs that allow you to get more work done in a single call and realizing the benefits of reduced friction on the platform will help you get more done with less. Here's a look at where we're heading in future releases as we continue on an API surfing expedition that addresses these two key themes. We're also investing in new trailhead content to better equip you with knowledge to take advantage of newer and more advanced API features. I mentioned a Salesforce Postman collection earlier in the session. Go here to get your hands on that collection and fast track your experience getting hands on with our APIs. Don't forget to contact your account teams if you'd like to participate in these pilots. I'm anxious to get your feedback. All right, thank you for surfing the API waters with us. With this knowledge, I'm sure you'll be hanging 10 in no time. Capato DevOps helps you deliver innovation on Salesforce with more speed, reliability, and visibility than ever before. Give your teams the platform they need to manage development with a pipeline manager. Release your innovation on demand with continuous delivery and automated testing, and continuously improve using the intelligence of DevOps 360 to optimize every step of the process. Check out Capato DevOps on App Exchange to learn more. Everyone say hello to Nico. Say hi to Ernie. This is my dog, Ernie. Delilah, can you say hi?